Hey everybody, Skylar here. Just wanted to, first of all, thank you all for watching the introductory series of videos that I created. I'm excited to keep producing new content and I'm stoked that so many more of you um, are aware of what I'm trying to do in this little corner of YouTube. So, uh, today we're going to talk about master keying, but specifically deriving a master key from the black box of a lock. Now, there are all sorts of ways to derive a master key. If you can pull apart several locks in the system, even if you can inspect a large number of keys in the system, you can probably get pretty close to figuring out what the master is, could be. Um, but today we're just going to talk about the inspection of a single cylinder, assuming you are not able to pull it off the door and actually inspect it. So, looking at your own lock, we're going to use your key in a series of blanks. Um, for a five pin lock, assuming there's a master key in each chamber, we're going to say that we're going to need, you know, 32 blanks to carry this out. But first, we start with five. Now, we should have a good idea of how master keying works. But, simply, let's say that this is your user key. When it's inserted into the lock, a couple of the master wafers are breaking at their top shear line, and a couple of the master wafers are breaking at their bottom shear line. What we hope to do is figure out exactly where those breaks are occurring and figure out the opposite shear line for each master wafer as well. To do this we're going to make five copies of our user key leaving one position blank on each of the five keys. For each of these keys we'll insert them into the lock and try to turn. Assuming that they don't, we'll cut down to the first position just a number one cut on that blank and try it in the lock again. Again, if it doesn't work, continue. We'll now cut down to a number two cut and a number three cut. On a number three cut, the key will work, of course, because that's the cut of our original key. Now we found the bottom of the master wafer and we'll continue cutting. On a number four cut, it will not work. On a number five, no dice, but again, on a number six cut, the lock will turn for us. That tells us that in the sixth position of the lock, the bottom of the master wafer is a number three cut, and the top of the master wafer is a number six cut. Carry this out with each of the remaining keys, and figure out the top position and bottom position of each master wafer inside of your lock. Once you have those numbers, you can quickly figure out every possible key that can operate your lock. Now you'll need to cut each of these keys. If you don't have a key machine or a friend with a key machine, you're going to have to do some hand filing. And yeah, that can take a while, but just put on a good movie that you enjoy and start cutting each of the keys in turn. You won't have to cut all 32, of course, because you have your original key and each of the five that you've modified to figure out the other master positions. Once you've produced all 32 keys, all you have to do is try them in another lock. Whichever one opens that lock will operate the entire building. Just to drive home the point that when you master key something, you inherently reduce its security. Thanks for watching.